Small correction before I go into more simulators from my last one, before everybody jumps on me over it. I had said Columbia University made these simulators. I am incorrect. It's Colorado State. And again, for those folks at Colorado State, I do apologize for that. And I'll put a note on the other video. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about, in this one, we're going to take a look at another simulator. It's the DC Circuit Simulator. Could also be AC Circuit, but in this case, we're going to look at the DC Circuit Simulator. Now, I'm going to come over here to Simulators Available, again, from HVACR.Education. Going to come over to Simulators Available, and again, I'm going to use the HTML5 Simulator. Okay, I'm going to go to that simulator. These occasionally change as I get new simulators in. So, in this case, I'm going to click on Circuit Construction DC Lab. We load the PH yet. Okay, simulators. And we have a basic screen where we can do whatever we want to do with it. Okay, I am going to start off by putting a battery up here. Because we start everything with a battery. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to build, in this case, I'm going to build a series circuit. So, I personally like having a big source area I can play with. And I like designing these things how I would design uh, basically a series circuit on a schematic. Okay, so we're going to come down here. Okay, we can drag it around. We can junction it together. Okay, I'm not going to pull... Eh, let's go ahead and put a switch in here. Okay, and I'm just going to bring it down a little bit further because I like having switches where I can get to them. Again, when I'm designing these circuits, I do think ahead a little bit about what my next circuit's going to be. So let's go ahead and we're going to do a single light bulb, okay? Because that's where we want to start off with a series circuit. So let's throw a single light bulb in here. Okay, watch your connections on these. They're close together. I'm going to put another single light bulb in here. Okay. I'm going to... Actually, you know what? Let's cut this one out. Let's just remove that one. Click on it to remove it. Okay. I am going to come back in here. I'm going to put another wire. Let's stick with a single light bulb. Okay. Makes it easier for us. Okay, sometimes building the circuit can be the most difficult part, and we'll just extend that out. Okay, I have a single light bulb. I'm going to click on the battery because I want to set the voltage up a little bit. Uh, let's take this up to 60 volts, okay? That gives us about half of our 120 we see. Uh, we'll just take that to 60 volts, okay? Now, if I turn the switch on, all I have to do is click on the switch, and I open and close the switch. Click on it again, close it, open it. Now, you see that our ba battery, unlike popular opinion, our current, the electron flow, is out of the negative and back to the positive. Every circuit must have a source, which is our battery, a path, which is our wiring, some sort of something to control the flow of current, Okay, a switch is what we basically say. You must have a source, path, switch, and I gotta have a load. Cannot have a circuit without a load, or it's called a short circuit. If the circuit is a complete, it's a closed circuit, working circuit. Okay, I can open the switch. This is now an open circuit. Okay, now, I can also have, okay, if I click on any one of these and break my connection, it works just like an open switch, okay? So just be aware that there's more than just one way to have a switch. Let's come over here and toss my ammeter in here, okay? Um, we want to put my amp meter in series on this one. Okay, we can see we have 6 amps. Now, this is really important. This is total current flow. No matter where I put this amp meter in the circuit, I would have 6 amps. We take a look at voltage. Let's pull my voltmeter out here someplace. Okay, if I go from positive to negative, we have my 60 volts. 
I'll leave my my positive side, my red side, where it's at, and I'll hopscotch through the circuit. And no matter where I'm in this circuit, as long as I'm touching the connections, I have 60 volts. Now, what happens when I go to the other side of the bulb? Okay, all of a sudden, I no longer have 60 volts. I effectively have zero volts. Why is that? Well, the reason is very simple. Okay, it's on the your two meter leads are on the same side of the load. Okay, as soon as I go back over to the other side, I now am on the negative side of the load plus the positive side of the load, so I have a difference in potential. This light bulb is using all 60 volts. Now, if I open the switch, okay, again, now the switch is a break in the current. So I'm on my, so I'm on the load side, okay, but I have no voltage. Okay, because again, my meter is reading a difference in potential. Think about it. If I'm coming out all the way down here and around with positive, but I don't have any flow of negative, I have a difference in potential at this switch. Watch what happens when I move my meter lead from there to there. I have a 60 volt difference in potential because this switch is closed. Close this or open. Close the switch. I have zero volts potential. Open the switch. I have 60 volts potential. So what this is basically telling you is voltage across an open switch is always source. Again, let me repeat that. Voltage across an open switch is source. Close the switch. I have zero. So voltage across a close switch is zero. Let's, get, let's move off the switch. What if I come across a load? Okay, right here. I'm measuring voltage across a load, and I open this wire. All of a sudden, I have 60 volts. Okay, come down here, put it back together. I have 60 volts, so voltage across a non-working load is 60 volts. Voltage across a working load is 60 volts. Let me reword that in case you use different voltages. Voltage across a non-working load or an open load is source. Voltage across a working load is also source. So how do you tell the difference? Well, the light's on. Okay, your meter's going to tell you if there's voltage present, but your eyeballs and your sense of everything else is going to tell you if there's voltage, if it's working or not. This is what comes into troubleshooting. Now, watch our current. The way it is right now, it's 6 amps. What if I turn the voltage down? Okay, what if I cut that voltage... Let's cut that voltage in half. Okay. 3 amps. So voltage and current are directly proportional. Now, everything has resistance as well. So if I take this resistance down in half, okay, down to 5 of that load, all of a sudden my current comes back. If I double the resistance up to, let's go up to 20, okay, all of a sudden, my current drops as well, okay, so resistance, current, and voltage all work together, okay, in a series circuit, there's a single path for electricity to flow, Okay, now, if I decide to turn this switch off, let's go ahead and leave the resistance that bulb where it's at. Let's go ahead and pick up my voltage. I want to bring this back up to 60 volts, okay? Let's bring this current back up to 60 volts. Or my voltage. So I have 3 amps, okay? Now, let's open this switch because we want to do this safely. And I am going to break a connection here, and we're going to put in a second bulb. Again, we're talking series circuit. So I can throw another bulb in here. Okay, let's throw another bulb in here. Okay, I have one bulb which has a resistance of 20. I have another bulb which has a resistance of 10. Watch what happens to my current. I have the same current 
okay, I have one path for electricity to flow. So no matter where in this line I put this current, okay, I'm going to get the same current all the way through the system. Now, if look at what my meter's done. I still have 60 volts, right? Because that's source. But let's measure where I'm getting it. So my first bulb is measuring 40. Go to my second bulb, measuring 40. My final bulb is measuring 60. Move this one to my, we'll move the left-hand meter lead. Okay, I have 60. Go to that bulb, I have 20 left. Okay, so if I measure the voltage across bulb 2, I have 20. If I measure the voltage across bulb 1, I have 40. So all the loads in the series circuit add up to full source. Okay, that's part of why we don't see a ton of series circuits used in the HVAC industry. Because they, because they each load gets a portion of source voltage. Okay, let me turn this power back off. Okay, and that portion, by the way, is based on resistance. So I'm going to put in another switch here. Okay, and we're going to do something called a bypass circuit. Doesn't matter if I put it on the negative or positive. In this case, I want it on the negative. So we're going to build this crazy contraption called a bypass circuit. Okay, I'm going to close the first switch. You notice I still have 60 volts and I have 40 volts across my first bulb. Now, close this second switch. Notice what happens to the voltage across that first bulb. That first bulb goes out. Why is that? Well, it's really simple. Electricity likes to take the path of least resistance. Okay, so if I have a zero resistance path in case a switch and a wire, that switch and wire is gonna be the preferred path for the electrons to flow. I open the switch, all of a sudden I no longer have a path for plow power to flow. So I have zero, I have a open switch here, no bypass. All the electricity has to flow through this single path of current. I close the switch, all of a sudden I have bypass, okay? Because again, it's closed switch. Voltage across a closed switch is zero. Now this is where we gotta be careful. Voltage across an open switch in this case is what? Wait a sec. It's 40. It's not source. That's because this switch is in series with another bulb. Okay? And in parallel with the bulb. So the voltage here is going to be the same as the bulb that it's going around. Because really, if I have my meter leads there... And there, it's still in the same point, okay? It's measuring the voltage drop that I'm using across that load. Close the bypass, all of a sudden it opens. Now, voltage across a closed switch is zero. Easy. Now, again, what differentiates the voltage drop that's happening with each load in series? Sort of easy. Okay, it's based on the resistance. So if I change the resistance of this bulb... Notice what happens to my voltage drop. The higher the resistance, the higher my voltage drop. And notice what's happening to my overall current. Okay, so if I take this down, now if I go down below, okay, the other one, all of a sudden my voltage drop drops. So again, the lower the resistance of a load in series, the lower the voltage drop will be. So if I come over here, okay, and come over to this light bulb. My voltage drop there is now 42. Okay. Come across the whole thing. The whole circuit. I still have 60 volts. Come across there. I have 60 volts. Because it's still difference in potential. Okay. That's series circuits. Basically, you have to remember, current is the same throughout the series circuit. The resistance of each load the, is what the voltage drop is going to be. And all loads in series split voltages. And again, current is going to take the path of least resistance and go around the lower resistance, go around the load with the higher resistance. Now, what happens in a circuit? Let me open my switches here. Just, okay, and I'm going to show you what happens in a circuit. 
okay, when we don't have a load. Okay, so let's say, let me go ahead and re, I'm going to remove my loads, okay? Let's just get the loads out of here. I can just remove these wires also, I guess. Don't really need them for this demonstration. Okay. This is going to go badly, by the way. Because this is going to be a short circuit. Okay, so what happens right now across this switch? I have a potential difference. Okay, and I'm going to just bring this up here. I have a potential of 60 volts. Watch the current. See how high that current gets? It's up into the 21,000s. Why is that? Because I have a path right now with no load. There's nothing to control the flow of current. Still have my voltage, but I have a. This is a short circuit. Okay, this is a short circuit. We have no load or no resistance to control the path of current. So if I wanted to put some resistance in here, let's just grab a resistor because a resistor will work somewhat the same as a low, as a load. Let's click on this. Okay, I have a 10 ohm resistor. Now if I close this, I'm fine. Okay, my voltage is steady. I have 6 amps of current. Okay, I'm measuring 60 volts. Come up here. Let's just decrease the resistance. Notice how the current starts moving faster. The amperage starts moving faster. Okay, I now have 10 amps. My resistance is down. Oops. We're now at 20 amps. Circuit can't handle 20 amps. Breaker would have blown. Okay, 15 amps seems to be the maximum that this circuit can handle. Okay, so that's that's how series circuits works. That's how we have to have loads in a circuit because if we don't have a load, we have a short circuit. Again, voltage across an open switch is the same whatever source is. Voltage across a closed switch is zero. Okay, and those are basic principles of series circuits.